So we're going to take a look at review day five. And so we're looking at this worksheet where we're using Desmos in order to discover what our parent functions are and what some translations are. So using Desmos, we're going to type in each equation and graph each function. We're going to make sure that we were using important points um, to ensure that it's accurate. And so let's graph the parent function y equals x squared. So Desmos, you go to desmos.com. And so hopefully some of you have used this before. Um, and so you just go there either on your laptop or even on your smart device. So if to type in y equals x squared, we actually just need to type x squared. So if you type in x, and then if you go show the keyboard, notice there's a square button here. So you could just press square and that does it for you. Um, and here is the graph. So that is the par parent function, y equals x squared. So we have a point here. And then actually there is a point at 1, 1. And the next one is 2, 4. And so I want to be able to draw that here. So let's go ahead and draw that on our worksheet. And so we would put our point here, and that is our vertex. And we actually have another point here. And then our other point is actually here. So I don't know how much you remember about graphing parabolas before, but we have from the vertex, we go right one, up one, right one, up three, and we go right one, up five. So here is the parent function, y equals x squared here. And so this is this graph. Now, oops, now we want to graph, we want to graph the other one, y equals x squared plus 1. So we want to graph this one. So let's go back to Desmos. Oops, here. And let's type it. So just type in, in the next uh, space, x squared. And then it's not in the X one anymore. So notice how my cursor moves. So make sure you're not in that cursor. And we could put plus one. And so notice how it changes. So what happens from the red to the blue? So the blue, it moves up one. So the vertex of Y equals X squared plus one, so let's write that, is going to be zero, one. And so we're gonna graph this here. So notice we have a point here. And then if we can trace it, um, you would notice that there would be another point at 1, 2. It's going to follow the same pattern, right one, up one, right one, up three, and it hits perfectly there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this parabola. We're going to draw the second one, y equals x squared plus 1. So the vertex is here, right one, up one, right one, up three. Okay, the best of our ability here. And then so here is this graph. Then it asks, describe the difference between the two graphs. So let's just say the second graph, what happens to the second graph? The second graph, it moves up one unit. One unit. Now we also need to find the function names. So just as a hint for you, the function names are here all the way at the bottom. We have linear, ab, uh, sorry, linear, quadratic, cubic, absolute value, and radical. So to help you out, um, this one, if you remember, this is a quadratic. Quadratic. Then we have here, this one, you can probably guess what that is, that's absolute value. This one, it's to the third power. This is x, or you can say it's x cubed. So to help you out, this is a cubic. Then over here, so just looking at these choices, we have radical left over and linear. And so this one is a radical. So pretty fast to figure out. Radical. And then the last one is linear. Okay, so just to kind of help you out at least with those parts. Now I do want you to go ahead and see if you can discover what happens. So our goal here is looking at the functions after you graph everything. What does adding a number at the end of a parent function do to the graph? So you're going to see a pattern. And then what does subtracting a number at the end of a parent graph do to the function, right? Um, and then so if you come back, so if you start with the next one, so if we just press X, um, you can either find uh, the absolute value in here. Sometimes you can look for it. 
um, to be able to type it out. Or if you just look on your keyboard, um, it's probably above the enter button. You have to press shift to get to it. That's kind of like the absolute value symbol here. And so here is absolute value of X, right? So then you can kind of take a look at the graph here. And so it looks like a V and then notice the pattern up one, right one, up one, right one here. Um, and then so you'll graph that and then below it, you'll graph absolute value of X minus three. So the graph should look similar, but it's just gonna move or translate, and then describe it. So you're gonna do the same thing for each of these. Okay, and so just finish that out. Now the next one, um, once you figure out the pattern on that, you'll know what happens with this sine of x plus two. So here is sine of x, this is the parent function, and then plus two, what do you think is gonna happen to it? And so whatever you decide, so just like we talked about here, that it moves up one unit, what actually really happens is that the whole thing, every single point moves up one unit, okay? So that'll kind of help you out for this example here. Here, you're gonna have to graph these as well and see if you can figure out the pattern. Be very careful what you're typing in. Um, so this is plus three here and this is minus three here. So how is it shifting? And so you're gonna figure out that pattern. Um, and so you'll get a couple of practice problems here. Uh, we're actually gonna talk about, you know, whether a graph gets wider or narrower. Um, and then you'll see when the, when the negative is in front, what happens to that. Uh, and then, so you'll just kind of find some general information about what happens um, when you do these to a parent function, okay? So that'll help you with transformations. We're gonna work on that all chapter one. So this is just a nice introduction to that.